Okay, good morning to you, class. Uh, happy that we are on for today. Good morning. Um, sorry, we're starting like uh, some few minutes late. Today, we are going to be repeating uh, briefly what we did yesterday for the class that we had. And um, we are going to be focusing on uh, uh, remote access, uh, securing remote access. We are also going to be looking at the lab on configuring the network interfaces. And then we are also going to be looking at another lab that has to do with um, setting up a small network. Now, those are the three labs that we intend to achieve today. And um, we'll try as much as possible to move as fast as we can. And for those of you who have already joined, I'm happy that you have joined. Um, if we have done some of these activities, I want us to follow together so that if we make a mistake or we forget a particular step, we can always, you can always chat me and then we'll see how we can um, uh, rectify it. So in the last class we had, we talked about um, remote access. And we said that the concept of remote access is when you have a device, an intermediary device, or maybe an end device, any device you have that you wish to gain access into that device from a distance or from, from um, a remote location. All right. And to, to do that, you need to configure the device to be able to receive incoming traffic um, to achieve that. Now, one of the very common ways to do that is to use uh, Telnet. Telnet is a terminal emulation software that actually helps to, to create the environment that can accept input traffic for you to be able to into a device, probably a router or a switch, for you to be able to effectively uh, manage it. And um, Telnet usually works basically on port uh, 23. And uh, the issue that Telnet has is that it is not very secure. Meaning that if I wish to log into my device remotely and somebody is running a packet sniffing software, maybe a Wireshark or any of the packet sniffers, um, the person would be able to see in plain text my login details. So you see, even the transaction or the, the details that I'm going to be communicating between my end device and the particular device, which is the switch or the router, there would be no security. Now, another platform or another uh, protocol that helps in, in this is also the SSH. The SSH is... Uh, um, secure shell, and uh, it helps in, it's a protocol that helps us to also remotely log into our switches and remotely log into our routers, but this time around, securely. And the reason why we said it's secured is because um, the data is encrypted. So if somebody uses a packet sniffing software in order to gain access to it, it might get in some packets, but you would have to take a lot of effort to decrypt that particular information because everything about it is encrypted, okay? And um, SSH actually runs on uh, port 22, all right? Now, when you want to set up SSH on your switch or on your, your, your router, there are certain steps that you need to, to follow. All right, we looked at those steps yesterday. So today we are going to look at those steps again and uh, we'll look at them step by step and then we see how we can effectively um, configure this particular um, protocol on the switch or on the router, all right? So the first one is to verify that your switch or your router has the capability to run SSH. Okay, so if the switch is not running an iOS that supports cryptographic features, that means the command that we're going to use will not be recognized. So the point we are making here is that first thing, your device should be able to recognize cryptographic features. Why is it that it needs the cryptographic features? Because that is the essence of SSH for uh, encryption. So we are going to now encrypt our our traffic, so we need that. The second thing is to configure a domain name, okay? The second thing is to configure a domain name. Um, 
Uh, just, just, just a second, please. Okay, sorry, I had to just attend to something. I'm in the office. So, um, where were we? Yes, you would have to configure a domain name. You have to configure a domain name that uh, um, you will put on the device. Then, step three, you will now generate the RSA keys. All right, and this is where this is where the this is why um, your the iOS you're running has to support um, cryptographic uh, futures because you need to generate your RSA key pairs. Okay, then uh, you now configure your user authentication. User authentication meaning that how will the user be able to log in into the device? How will they be able to log in into the device? Okay, now. Um, uh, yesterday we, 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 we made a small mistake, but someone in the class helped us out, corrected. Uh, when we come to login, we're going to show you, you have to use the login local, meaning that you need to tell the router or tell the switch that your, the, the, the login credentials are locally found on the device. So we're going to do that. Then uh, we also now configure our VTY lines and enable the SSH protocol, okay? We do that, and then we now enable SSH version 2 uh, on the device. So let's go right into it, and let's see how we can, um, we can achieve that, okay? This is my packet tracer. And uh, I, before I go ahead, I want to be sure that you all can see my packet tracer. Uh, the packet tracer. Can you all see it? Can I get any confirmation from anyone if you can see my packet tracer? Yes, we can see it. Oh, thank you very much. All right. So the first thing we go ahead is um, we're going to secure our passwords. All right. And um, if you look down here, there is a completion. This is a task. So as we do the task, there is a completion percentage we're going to be seeing here. So as we make any uh, configuration changes, you will be noticing that uh, we have it. So at the end of the day, we should be able to have a hundred percent. So what we'll be doing is that we will be looking at the steps here and then uh, uh, checking out the configuration that we are going to do. Okay. All right. So uh, part one, it says that we should um, enter our... Uh, PC, we enter the command prompt of our PC1 and then tell net to switch one. Okay, tell net to switch one and the user executive password is Cisco. Now we are giving the IP address of switch one as 10.10.10.2. .10 .10 All right, so um, I'm going to come to uh, PC1. All right, I'm going to come to PC1 here. Let me drag it this way. All right. And then we come to desktop and they say command prompt. So let me verify end to end connectivity. So I now ping 10.10.10.2. All right. So I'm going to have a timeout and then later have um, my reply since I'm just running for the first time. All right. So good. So I have a connection. So what I do now is I now tell net. Telnet into 10.10.10.2 and I press enter. Now it asks me for my login credentials, which is Cisco. All right, then I type enable, then Cisco. So I'm already in the switch. All right, so you can see I am still on 0% here. So we're going to now begin. It says that uh, B says save the current configuration so that any mistakes might, uh, might might make can be reserved. All right, so let me just save um, copy running config to start up config. All right, so I've saved that. Then uh, what we should do is we should show the current configuration to note that the passwords are in plain text. So if I say show running configuration, so you see the enable passwords, they are in plain text, okay? So let's go to our VTY lines. Our VTY lines, you see, they're in plain text. All right, now notice that the VTY lines has a login here. 
So when we configure our SSH, we're going to remove this password and then we're going to now, instead of using login, we're going to use login local, okay? So you see password, they are all in plain text. So what they say we should do here is that we should encrypt it using the service password encryption command. So um, I will go to my configuration terminal, then I will say service password encryption. So I have encrypted it and you see that they've given me 20 marks here, 20% of my task has been done. Then verify that my passwords are encrypted, then do show run. So can, you can see here, my enabled password you was showing Cisco earlier on, right now is uh, encrypted. And then let's come to VTY, can you see? They are all encrypted. So we are done with that. Then I go to part two. Part two says, uh, where are we? Set the domain name and generate our IS, uh, uh, RSA keys, okay? So we'll configure the domain name to be netacad.pka. So I now say IP domain name uh, is what? netacad.pka. All right, so I have done my domain name. Then it says that uh, we should secure the net account. Um, uh, 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 we should generate the RSA keys and we should use uh, uh, 1024. So we use the command crypto, crypto key generate RSA. What size did they say we should do? 1024. So I do 1024. All right. So we've generated our RSA key. So we're done with that. Then uh, we are also supposed to now create an administrator user with uh, Cisco as the secret password. So, um, so username administrator administrator then secrets we use a uh, what cisco is that what they say we should do yep so all right so we have generated that then uh after doing that they say configure the vty lines to check the local user database for login credentials all right so we come here, we say line VTY 0 to what? 15. Okay. So um, what are we supposed to do? We use the command transport uh, input SSH. Is that not so? Then um, we say login local. Is that not so? All right, login local. Then um, we are to remove remove the existing VTY lines. So the VTY password. So let's say no password. Uh, okay, yeah, no password. All right, so we have removed the existing password. Then what else? Okay, so we should verify. Now, uh, another thing that I forgot to let you guys know yesterday that I later discovered when I went back, um, you see, um, this is a packet tracer environment. So on a normal day, if I was using my system to connect remotely to, to another device, uh, what I would do is I would use um, maybe PuTTY or any term, uh, terminal emulation softwares and run the SSH. But for me to run SSH command, on on the desktop i will definitely need to 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 put in a third party um application okay sir okay okay i'll definitely need to put in a third party application so as it is now if i if i if i now do um exit and then i try to run ssh um, from the desktop client i will not be able to log in but until i use um, since this is a packet tracer but if I'm using my system, my command prompt, I just need a third-party application to help me. Or maybe you use um, 
the party. But what we can do now is uh, we can save our work, exit, and then exit, then copy, copy running configuration to start up configuration. Save your work. Then we now do show run to verify our configurations that we have done. So I'm going to do show running config. All right. So um, the enable password, we are there, is quite encrypted. And look at the IP domain name that we have configured. It's there, it's correct. And hey, look at this. The username administrator, wow, look at the password. You see how encrypted it is? Very well encrypted. Okay. Then uh, we go down to our VTY lines. Can you see? This is login local. The earlier one that we saw was just local. Okay. So then we now use the transport input SSH command. And that is it. So I don't think it's kind of difficult. It's, um, it's way simple and you can go about it. You can, you can go about it and do it on your own uh, for the lab. So that would be it for this particular lab. So we're going to do the next lab. But before we go there, here we are to verify our SSH. Um, to verify it, like I earlier said, I'm supposed to use um, maybe another window. But if I use my desktop client, let, let's see it again for the packet tracer. Assuming I exit, if I say SSH, SSH, uh, you see, it's supposed to prompt me, okay, SSH, then I type the IP address 10.10.10.2. .10 .10 you see, it's telling me invalid command, all right, because this is a, this is a packet tracer Windows environment, all right? So if I have a terminal emulation software or third-party application, it would be easier. I'll just type it and then I will go. Or if you are running Linux, Linux or any of these um, open source softwares, you can be able to achieve that. Okay, so uh, we are done with that. So basic router configuration. Now, every router, you buy a new router, you buy a new device, you need to be able to configure it um, to be able to serve your needs. Now, um, before you go advance into configuring to know what you need, there are certain basic things that you need to do um, and those are the basic things that uh, I just want us to know. First of all, you need to create the host name of the device. Now, you might have so many devices on your network, and if you do not have a host name, uh, when you remotely log into a device, you wouldn't know which device is which. And so the best way to do is to name your device, and the nomenclature can go along with the location of the device or the function of the device or the peculiarity that separates that device um, from other devices. Then once you do your host name, the next thing is to enable secret. Enable secret is the same thing as enable password. The only difference is that this is even more secure than enable password. Then line console zero, uh, you log into your line and create a password that you have. Your VTY lines, you create your password. And then you use the login, okay? But if you want to gen, uh, uh, configure SSH, then you would have to do the lab that um, we have just done. So after all this, you now run the command service password encryption, all right? Remember, we're considering a lot of um, securities. Then there is the banner. This banner, uh, what do you see here? Banner MOTD. MOTD stands for message of the day, all right? And the concept of this banner basically is uh, when you want to, uh, when you configure your device, any third party or any unauthorized person that, that gain access to the device, he needs to know, get a message. He needs to get a message that would tell him, hey, this is only authorized users that are allowed in this particular device. So if the person persistently goes for that, then you can then have a problem with such a person, probably legal or something like that. So we're going to do all that. We do basic configurations as well as a message of the day. All right. Then we have what we call the dual stack topology. One distinguishing feature between switches and routers um, is the type of the interfaces uh, that uh, 
the support, okay? For example, layer two switches support uh, LANs. Therefore, they have multiple fast ethernet. So I can log into a switch and I do maybe show run or show interface brief or show interfaces. And then you see a list of 24 or 48 ports or fast ethernet uh, interfaces or even gigabit ethernet interfaces. All right. Now, uh, the router on the other side um, does not go that way. All right. So sometimes you log into the router, you see fast ethernet interfaces, you see gigabit interfaces, you see serial interfaces. All right. You see different interfaces. So uh, the dual stack topology basically uh, is used to demonstrate the configuration of IP version 4 routers and IP version 6. When, for instance, you are running two um, IP protocols on your network, whether IP version 4 or IP version 6. And in IP version 4, remember the nomenclature. You must have done that in CCNA 1 for IP version 4. And then for IP version 6, if you look at the nomenclature, it's also different. So the structure of those IPs, especially in the IP header, remember your OSI model. In your OSI model layer 1, 2, 3, which is the network layer, we talked a lot about the routing policies as well as, uh, as, well as the IP header for all the packets. IP header for IP version 4, then the IP header for IP version 6. There are similarities in the IP headers, but there are certain differences in the IP headers. And because of these differences that exist in the IP headers, when you are running uh, an IP version 6 network with an IP version 4 IP addresses, then you need to find a way to convey both traffic simultaneously. Or when you are running an IP version 4 network and you have IP version 6 IP addresses, then you have to find a way to make them run. So in this activity, this lab activity, you see that um, uh, there are certain interfaces, <clears throat> excuse me, there are certain interfaces who will configure IP version 4. There are interfaces who also configure IP version 6. So a laptop, a desktop, a system, a router interface or whatever can have an IP version 4 and can have an IP version 6 interface, all right? depending on the kind of traffic that wants to run on it. So how do you configure your IP, your, your interfaces on your routers, okay? Um, configured with at least one IP address, we need to use the IP address and then the subnet mask for IP version 4, and then the IP version 6 address. Now, a lot of students have been having challenge understanding the commands to be run in IP version 6. They might be conversant with the ones for IP version 4, but for IP version 6, um, some of them tend to have some issues. Now, there is a simple way to go about this. Okay, If you know the command structure for IP version 4, then it's very easy for IP version 6. For instance, now, if I want to create an IP address, for my, if I want to maybe say, uh, display um, the interfaces, all right? So if I say show IP interface brief, all right? It's going to show me the IP interfaces. Now, once I use the word IP, all right? By default, it takes it as IP version four. So if I need that same command for IP version six, anywhere I see IP, all I just need to do is IP V6 and the same command structure. So anything I do, I just, anywhere there is an IP, I just put V6, okay? So for instance, now, if you see here, we do IP address, that's the command structure. You want to assign an IP address to, to, to your router or to your switch. Then you now say uh, IP address, then the IP address and the subnet mask. Now for IP version 6, it's simple. You just say IP, then you just put V6, then address. Okay, then the IPv6 address and the prefix length. So you see the prefix length in the IP version 6 is like uh, the subnet mask we talk about in IP version 4. All right, so how do you activate the interface? You activate it by the no shutdown command. By default, most of these interfaces are on their shutdown mode. Shutdown mode as in um, they are not active. All right, so you do all this configuration and yet it is still not active. So what you need to do now is to 
to enable the no shutdown on that interface, and then the interface will come up. And then for standard practices, it's also good to have um, um, a description to the interface. For instance, I set up an interface and I'll say um, uh, description, then I'll say link to ISP1 or link to MTN Nigeria or whatever it is, or link to this particular villa. All right. So you can uh, put in the description and um, uh, it will serve you very well. So this is an example on how to do this. So you, for instance, gain access to the router. So interface gigabit this, so we get into the interface mode. Our prompt changes here. IP address 192.168.10.1 uh, and the subnet mask. And for IPv6, what do I do? I only say IPv6. So you see the command structure is the same. IP address, IPv6 address. So it's just the V6 that you add. Then you now put in your address. Now you see in place of the subnet mask here, for IPv4, if you look at this subnet mask, this is on the slash notation, this is slash what? This is slash 24, all right? But you write the subnet mask. But for IPv6, you put the slash notation slash 64. So you see description link to LAN1. Then you do no shutdown. You are done with this interface. It's as simple as that. The IP address, the V6, the description, no shutdown. Then you come to the next interface, you do likewise. Third interface, you do likewise, and you are done. Okay? You are done. Now, there's another interface we call the loopback interface. It's basically a logical interface uh, on the router uh, that you can set in the router. And uh, sometimes you set it up for identification of the router interface itself. Uh, or the router ID or the interface. We'll talk about that much later, all right? We'll talk in detail about it. But basically, the most important thing you need to know that the loopback interface is not a physical interface that you can see like the gigabit port, the fast Ethernet port, no. It's a logical interface that once you create, um, it's always, um, uh, it's always up, all right? So usually you use the loopback interface for testing. All right, you want to maybe use it for testing or to manage the iOS or to manage the device and things like that. All right, so basically we use them in lab environments and in a few cases, in real case scenarios, okay? And how do you configure the loopback interface? You just go interface, loopback, and then you give it the loopback number. All right, interface, loopback one or two or whatever. Then you now give in the IP address for that particular loopback interface. All right, so let's go to the lab activity and see what we can do about that. So this is the packet tracer activity here. Uh, let, uh, where is the, all right, this is the activity here. So in this activity, you see we have been given, um, All right, just just a minute. Let me attend to my boss. Just a second. Uh, all right. Uh, so sorry. I had to I had to go resolve a problem. Okay. So um wow. We 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 are trying to res uh, configure excuse me the interfaces. So this is the packet tracer activity. All right, so these are the IP addresses that we have. And um, for router one, this is router one here. Okay, this is router one here. Let me see. I hope you are, I'm sharing it. Uh oh, sorry. Okay, so. Uh, I'm sure you can see my packet tracer now. This is router one here. These are the router interfaces for router one. This is uh, PC one is here. That's the IP address. So these are the details. So what we're just going to do basically is to configure IP version four and verify connectivity. Then IP version six and verify connectivity. All right, so the background is routers one and two, each have two LANs. That's, uh, where's router one? This is router one, has LAN one and LAN two. 
Router 2 has LAN 1 and LAN 2, all right? So each uh, has two LANs. Your task is to configure the appropriate addressing on each device and verify connectivity within the LANs. Note that the user executive password is uh, Cisco and the privilege password is class. All right, so let's go down into it. Part one, configure IP version four and verify connectivity. So assign address, uh, assign IP version four address to router one and LAN one devices. Referring to the addressing table, configure IP addressing for router one LAN interfaces, PC1 and PC2. So this is what we are going to start with for step one. So let's go back to the table. This is the addressing table. But before we go, let me increase my font size so that it will be very visible to you guys. Oh yeah, it's already increased. It's already increased. So, all right, so PC1, let's see, PC1 is here. What is the IP address? We are supposed to go to desktop, IP address. Uh, PC1 has IP address of 172.16.20.10. Uh, so I come here, 172.16.20.10 and um, slash 25. Now, slash 25, how do you know the, the, the subnet mask for slash 25? Uh, I'm sure in CCNA 1, you guys did subnetting. You did subnetting, so you should be able to uh, remember how we do that. But just for those who may, may forget, uh, slash 25, slash 24 means that 24 bits are on, on the, on the, what do we call it now? 24 bits are on, on the network portion. So let me just bring up, um, I don't know. Anyway, we know slash 25. So 24 bits are on, in 24 bits are on here, this is 16 bits are on. And then if I do, 255 here, that means 24 bits are on. And then in the last octet, the last octet, my subnet mask is going to be what? Because now I have 255, 255, 255 dot what? It's only one bit. It's only one bit that is on in the first octet. Okay? In the first octet, uh, in the last octet, only one bit is on. So that one bit is 2 raised to the power of what? 7 which is what? 128. So I'm going to put 128. All right. So um, my default gateway, the default gateway for PC1, this is PC1 here. So the default gateway for PC1 is going to be this interface, this router interface. Okay. So let's see which interface is this. Is this G00 or G0 slash 1? Let me come here and see whether it's going to show me. Uh, but I guess it's G00. I guess so. So if it's G00, the default gateway would be 20.1. All right. So I'm going to come here. 172.16.20.1. Okay. So we have done for PC1. Let's come to PC2 and uh, give it the IP address that it deserves. So PC2, PC2, where's PC2? All right, 172.16.20.138. So 172.16.20.138 is also slash 25. So slash 25 is going to be 255.255.255.128, right? All right, then my gateway is going to be 172.16.20. Uh, where is it? Let's look for the gateway, .129. All right, 20.129, 20.129, 20 
9. Okay, so we are done with PC2. So the next thing we do is we enter into the router and uh, we assign these IP addresses on the interfaces. So I click the router, command line interface. So, password Cisco, enable, password is class, all right, so I go to my global configuration mode, config, config T, then I will go to this interface, interface G0, interface G0 slash 0, all right, then uh, IP address is going to be what? 172.16.20.1 and then 255.255.255.128. Then I press enter. Okay? Then the next thing I should do on the interface is what? No, okay, no, shut down. All right, it brings the interface up. The next thing is I create my description. So description, description, I will say, what do I use as description? I will say link to what? LAN1, right? So I will say link to, LAN 1. Good. So uh, I'm good with that. So the next thing is I go to this interface. Uh, exit. So I go to interface G0 slash 1. All right. So IP address is what? 172.16 dot 20 dot 129 with a subnet mask of 255.255.255.1128 bam then no shut down okay then description is what uh link to Land two. Let me save my work. Do right. So now we have finished um, this part one. It says we should assign PC one and PC two. We have done. And uh, uh, step two, PC one and PC two should be able to ping each other. All right and the dual stack server. Okay, so uh, this is PC1 and PC2 should be able to ping each other. So let's give it a try. So I come to PC1. First of all, let me check that I can reach my gateway. Command prompt, so ping 172.16.20.1. Dot one. Okay, I have. I can reach my gateway. So let me ping PC two. Um, twenty. What PC two? What's the IP address? Twenty dot one three eight. Right. Twenty dot one three eight. So let's wait and see. Okay. Yeah, we are getting a reply. So. Uh, it means that we are good. Oh, we should test the dual stack server. The dual stack server, what is the IP address? Let's check it. 64.100.1.10. Oh, so five. Ping 64.100.1.10. Okay, let's see. 64.100. Okay, yes, we are getting replied. So we are good with this. Then we go to 
were verified. Part two, configure IPv6 address and verify connectivity. So we go back to the addressing table and uh, we configure IPv6 serial interface 0 slash 0 slash 0 on router 1. We configure this. Okay, so we come to router 1. Exit. So Okay. All right. So we go to where did we say we should go? Serial zero zero zero. So interface serial zero slash zero slash zero. And then what do we do? The IP address. Oh, this is a public. No, they say IPv6. IPv6. Oh, is on router two. Router two. So let's go to router two. Router 2 here, man line, and then Cisco enable plus, so configure terminal. All right, so uh, gigabit interface G0 slash 0 has this IP address, okay? So interface G zero slash zero. Then IP. Now I'm going to put V six. Then address. Okay. Uh, let me see. This is the address two o one column D B eight column C zero D E column one two this slash sixty four. I press enter. Okay. Then I do my no shot down, all right? Then I now do description is what? Um, link to, link to what now? Let's check under our description. Uh, that's link to LAN 3, link to LAN 3. All right, then I go to the next interface, interface G0 slash 1. Exit here, so interface G0 slash 1. Okay, then I use this address. This is the address. So I say IPv6 address is what? Paste it here. And I'm good. Then no shot down. Okay. All right. So then description. Uh, description is linked to LAN four. All right. All right. Good. So we have done that. What did the task says again? Uh, we have assigned, oh, okay, we are supposed to assign also to PC3 and PC4. So PC3 has this IP address. So let's come down here. Where's PC3? PC3, where are you? Okay. This is PC3. Desktop, IP, then I'll come down to IPv6 address. Okay. This is the IPv6 address slash what 64 okay and then the gateway for <coughs> pc3 is what let's see uh this is g0 slash zero i guess so where is it uh, right so this is the gateway okay so i come to west pc3 i do gateway all right, so invalid gateway entered. Oh, oh, sorry. All right, so we're good.
All right, then we go to PC4, which is the last one. This is the IP address for PC4. From desktop, IP, then IPv6. Where is it? IPv6 here. IP address, then slash 64 right and then the gateway is going to be this here right this is the gateway this is the gateway okay right so i think we are good here and then we check out what is the next thing uh referring to the rs table configure ip addressing for lan 2 interfaces pc3 and pc4 the serial interface is already configured so we should verify pc3 and pc4 okay uh, let's verify pc3 and pc4 so let me ping PC4 from PC3, PC4 from PC3, and ping uh, this. Okay, so you see I'm having a reply, and then PC, PC, I'll ping PC3 from pc4 now so i go now to pc4 all right so ping this so i'm getting a reply okay um so where are we oh we are 96 percent so what is it that we've not done we've not done rightly so let's check since our pinging are all correct everything seems to be fine uh is there anything we've not configured PC3, we have done PC4. Serial interfaces, we are told, have been configured. Okay. So let's check results. Check. I think the dual stack. Oh, dual stack. Oh, correct. Correct. Okay. Default gateway for PC4. All right. And default gateway for PC, um, PC3. All right. So I think uh, that's where we got it wrong. And then we'll stack. All right, so let's see. I think we mixed it up. PC3, this is PC3. What is going to be the default gateway? Let's check. This is PC3 here. The default gateway should be this interface. Uh, I guess this is G0 slash zero. If I'm not mistaken. Uh, G0 slash zero, this is it. Default gateway. So let me come to PC3 interface. PC6 default gateway. All right. So let me come to. Uh, let me see. But if default gateway was wrong, I wish. Shouldn't we have um, a request timeout? Yes, we should have a request timeout. So let me check what's the default gateway for PC4. It should be this, I guess. Uh, no, this. Let me copy it exactly. And then we come to PC4. And we come to default gateway. Seem to be fine, uh, but we still not so. Uh, Just ping the dual stack. Okay, the dual stack. Oh, we need to ping the dual stack. Correct. So let's ping the dual stack. Uh, server was the IP address. See the IP address here. Did we close? So let me ping the dual stack server from PC3. Okay. 
All right, so ping 2001, column DB8, column 100, column 1, double column A. Okay, we have a reply. Arrow reply, so we can reach the draw start from PC3. How about, how about PC4? Let's ping it and see. All right, so ping 2001, column DB8, column 100, column 1, double column A. We have a reply also. Okay, we have a reply. So obviously, I don't know, has anybody gotten 100%? Uh, probably is the setup of this. There's an error somewhere or we're missing something. Anyway, um, if you can do it and get 100%, just let us know where we made mistake uh, on our chat group. Uh, but if you are still stopped at 96, then I guess maybe there is a um, small error in the calculation metrics, especially when it comes to the default gateway here, when we check our results. So you see, uh, it says default gateway is incorrect for IPv6 in PC3 and PC4. Okay, but I don't think, oh, so we need to ping. Let's ping, let's try pinging across board. Okay, so this is PC4. Uh, maybe we should try pinging let me ping um, PC1, 172.16.20.10. Ping 172.16. Um, where is it? Where is PC1? 172.16.20.10. Let's wait and see. Okay, have a timeout. Okay, so we have a timeout here. We cannot cross, we are not crossing over the dual stack. It is 20.1. It is 20 oh, 20.1. 20 .1. Oh, okay, 20.1. Okay, let's see, 20.1. Can we reach it? Now we still cannot reach 20.1. Okay, so let me try 20.138 in 172.16.20.138. Okay. Now, in the activity, we were not told to verify connectivity between um pc1 2 and then pc3 4 okay we're only told to verify the connectivity not across the border so but um let me leave it open you can do the activity you let us know uh maybe by can you next check class. your ip addresses sorry can you check your ip addresses especially for the ip uh for pc3 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 yes all right, what's our IP address on PC3? IP configuration. Let's come to the addressing table. PC3 is 200. Your default gateway, isn't it supposed to be FE80 instead uh, of? Okay, the default gateway for PC3 is giving. The IP version 6, it's FE80. 80 because i have that uh, i don't have that same address i have fe80 uh double semicolon two and it gave me a hundred percent okay okay now if you observe i think there are in these activities there are like uh, three types there are three types i don't know which one you have but if you see the ip addresses that we have here uh we have for pc3 2001 dd8 C zero D E, okay. Then double. Uh, then column twelve. Then you can see the correspondence in the router interface. Here, look at it. Here, uh, 
here, look at it. This is the correspondence here. There is, in my own activity, there is no DBFE. But I guess if we reset this activity, um, okay, let's stop at 96 here. Let me reset the activity and let's see whether we will get a different, um, if we get a different set of uh, IP addresses here, then I guess uh, maybe this type is wrong. So let me reset the activity. And uh, let's see. All right. All right. Sorry, let me close it. Close it. Let me launch it. Um, Right, I'm launching it. All right, so while it's launching, I just want to inform you that I'm going to be enabling your test, your assessments, the tests, assessments that uh, we have. Um, I'll be enabling it so that uh, for those, I understand that there are those who want to move a little bit faster. Uh, so they would want to access, they would want to be able to access um, um, their tests uh, on their own. So I'm going to do the enablement today. Um, I don't know, since you guys are instructors, I don't know whether you've been taught how to enable assessment for students, but um, maybe let me enable it this one, then we will all see uh, later. Uh, okay, see. All right, this is FE. Is this the FE that you are talking about? FE80? But this yes, is on FE80 the... with the double semicolon and two at the end. That's supposed to be the default gateway. Okay, okay, that's the default gateway, right? Mm. Fortunately, we don't have that. But anyway, I'm happy that at least you have gotten yours right. Um, do well to post it on the social media platform, just, just your table your addressing table, just take a screenshot and uh, send it to us on the WhatsApp platform or on the WebEx team platform so that uh, others can be able to take it again. So I'm going to also do that and then we'll let you guys know. Okay, we really have a good time uh, with you guys. Just a moment, let me just respond to it's going out. Unfortunately, I'm in the office and uh, we have some issues so i have to be resolved all right so uh we're done with this let's go let's continue with um for the class all right the next thing is verify directly connected networks there are several show commands that um can be used to verify the operations of uh, interfaces. Now, let me let you know. Uh, one of the things that uh, differentiate network administrators from other network administrators, how good you are, is your ability to be able to use the troubleshooting uh, 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 tools, like um, the show commands. You need to know the right commands to use when you have certain kind of problems. So there yeah, are... The following commands are especially useful to quickly identify the status of an interface. And amongst them is the show IP interface brief or show IPv6 interface brief. Okay, so remember, as I said, anywhere there is an IP, you can replace it with a V6, IPv6, if you want to get the details for IPv6. Then the show running config interface, then the show IP route or show IPv6 route okay so uh these are the command if i show the show ip interface brief it just gives me the interfaces briefly whether they are up the status they are up the protocol and then uh what else uh, yeah for the show ipv6 interface brief it also gives me this the ip address the status whether it's up or not the i the status and the protocol all right, so here it gives you the IP address, the IPv4, and then the status. Here it gives you the IPv6, 
and uh, and the status. So uh, the output of the show IPv6 interface brief command displays two configured IPv6 addresses per interface. All right. Okay, just a moment. Pass. Okay. So the output of the show IP the show IPv6 interface brief command displays two configured IPv6 addresses per interface. One address is the IPv6 global unicast address that was manually entered. The other address which begins with the FE80 is the link local unicast address for the interface. So a link local address is automatically added to that interface whenever the global unicast address is assigned. <clears throat> All right, so the show IPv6 interface gigabit uh, 0 slash 0 slash 0, this command that you see here, if I show this, what they are telling us is that I'm going to see the link local address as FE80, this, 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 this. And then the global unicast address as we have here as 2001. So this is the address that we have, um, we have assigned to the device. All right, so you can use this show show IP addresses or the show IP addresses to just verify. Okay, if you want to verify your configuration, you use show running config uh, or show config interfaces or show interfaces or show IP interfaces or show IPv6 interfaces. All right, so um, if I do show running config and then I start I do interfaces, then it's going to give me the interface that I want to see. So I say gigabit G000, then it will give me the running config details as regards that particular uh, interface. You can verify your route by the show IP route or show IPv6 route command. And uh, these commands actually displays the content of your routing table uh, in your router, okay? The content of your routing table in your router. All right, then how you can also use the filter commands uh, to, in order to narrow down your search. So uh, basically the remain, I'm sure you are going to read on your own. Aha, this is the last part that I want us to talk about. Uh, it's now going to, we're going to use these tools to verify directly connected networks. So for IP version four and for IP version six, okay? So uh, where is the activity? Let me launch it. All right, and then implement a small network. So let me launch the two and then whichever one that comes first. All right, while this is going on, let me enable your assessment. While I'm loading this, let me enable your assessment and uh, I will show you how to, uh, maybe, no, maybe I will do that after the class, after the class. Okay, uh, this is to implement a small network. Uh, read instructions to build a small network. So let me close the other packet tracer activities. Okay, verify directly connected networks. So, okay, this is to implement a small network. So we have an activity to set up a small network and um, maybe we should do that. Let's do that as our last activity for the day. So you see here is blank. Um, right. So, so it says um, part one is to create a network topology, part two is to configure devices and verify connectivity. 
Now, this particular lab activity gives us a summary of the entire chapter one that we have done. So uh, create the network topology and then obtain the required devices. So let's see, A says click the network device icon at the bottom bar. Uh -huh. If we do that, let me do this this way. Okay. All right, so click the network devices icon at the bottom. All uh, right, then click on the router icon submenu. This is the router icon submenu. And then locate the 1941 router icon. Where is the 1941 router icon? We got it here. So I bring it up here. All right. Uh, drag the icon and drop it. Okay, we have done that. Click the switch entry sub menu and locate 2960. Where is the switch? 2960. All right. Then, uh, what did they say? Repeat the steps above so that there would be two switches in the topology area. Okay, so I'm going to now two switches. Okay, and then uh, click the end device icon and locate the PC icon. Drag two PCs to the topology. End device PC. Drag two PCs. All right. So maybe let me put this here. Let me put this here. All right. Then. Uh, arrange the devices into a layout that you can work with by clicking and and dragging. Okay, so let me rearrange it. I'll prefer my switch here. This one here. I prefer, prefer the router here. And then prefer, let me take this one this way. All right, so uh, we well, have done that. Step two, name the devices. So the devices have default names that you need to change. You will name the devices as shown in the addressing table. You are changing the display names of the devices. This is the text label that appears below each device. Your display name does not match. You will not be scored. So uh for router is router a so this is where router a then for switch one sorry this is let me put this as switch one and then Switch two. Put it like this. Then PC one. Put it like this. Then PC two. And we put it like this. Okay. Then what else? I think we have named them. Now, the next thing we have named our devices. We repeat until all devices are named. All right. Now, connect the devices. Click the orange lightning bolt connections icon in the bottom folder, which is this guy here. And then locate the copper straight through cable icon. It looks like a solid black. This is the copper straight through. You see the name. Can you see the name here? So, and then to connect the devices, click and connect the devices. So, I'm going to connect this maybe to this. And then let me connect this to this. And connect uh, gigabit zero zero here, and then connect zero one 
in here. Okay, so we have connected our devices using copper straight through cable. Where are we? Yeah. All right, connect. I specified below. Okay, RTA G zero. Okay, I didn't even follow that. All right, let's see. G zero zero connect to switch one, which we did that. Okay. G zero zero connect to switch one, and then. G01 to switch two, all right? Then switch one to, uh -huh, to FA01, switch two to FA01. So I think I made a mistake there, so let's correct it. Uh, where is my deletes? Is my deletes right? Okay, and then we connect it properly. The pieces you see on this, and then F zero one. Okay. This is and then F01. Then G00. Zero zero, zero zero, I will connect it to switch one. The gigabit zero one. Okay. Then G01. Gigabit one. Okay, so this is what we're supposed to have. Good. Then record the addressing and gateway addresses in the address table. You can use any available address in the network for PC1 and PC2. So uh, what they're saying is that we're going to assign IP addresses on the switches. All right, so let's check the topology. This is it, PC1 and PC2. So PC1, I'm going to use, uh, where is it, 10, 10, 10, let me see, 10. So 10, 10, 10, 10, the subnet mask 255, 255. And then with the gateway of 10, 10, 10, 1. And, uh, oh, sorry. 10, 10, 10, 10. This will be 10, 10, 10, 1. Okay. Right, then I will come to PC2. I'll use the 20.0 network. And then 10, 10, 20, 20, 10. 0 and then here will be 10 10 21 okay so we're good with this so we have assigned the IP addresses on our pieces so remain for us to assign it on VLAN 1 on the switches and then the router interfaces okay so let me enter the router interface first all right and then enable i will not do the basic configuration yet i'll just do ip addressing i'll come and do the basic configuration based on the instructions so configure terminal 
Then I am on RAP RTA, so interface G0 slash 0. Okay, so IP address would be 10, 10, 10, 1. 255, 255, 255.0. Enter, and then no shutdown. Okay. Exit. Then I go to the next interface, interface G0 slash 1. Enter. IP address uh, is going to be what? 10, 10, 21. 255, 255, 255, zero. No shutdown. All right. So I have done for the router. Now let me come to the switch. All right. In the switch, I'm going to go to VLAN 1 and assign it these IP addresses. Okay. So this would be enable configure terminal. Then um, interface VLAN one. All right. Then uh, IP address. IP address would be ten 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 dot two two five five two five five two five five dot zero. Short okay, then I come to this switch. I do likewise enable configure terminal interface VLAN 1 IP address would be 10 10 22 0 short okay good so now we have assigned IP addresses as we have been told now let's see what's the next thing to do now we are to do basic router configuration now so uh, host name as shown on the addressing table and then configure Cisco Cisco en pass as the encrypted password okay and then think cisco line for the vty lines okay all right so i guess this is going to be for the router so let me come to the router this is the router and uh, exits so host name would be rta Okay, then uh, what? Enable secrets. C C I S C O E N P A five five. Okay, then line V T Y. Okay. For the lines, let me start from line console. Line console zero. Uh, password would be C I S C O E N T A five five. That's okay. Sorry. Uh, for the line passwords, Cisco line pass like this. Then login online VTY zero to four password would be Cisco line pass. Okay, login. Okay, uh all lines except connections okay so configure the appropriate message of the day all right so let's do message of the day message of the day then i'll say motd uh what is it yeah 
and a recognize what the message of the day. Uh, I forgot, I forgot. How do we configure message of the day? Uh, I forgot to uh, MOTD coming. All right, I will remember it before 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 we finish this lab. Just forgot the first line. Banner MOTD. Sorry? It's Banner MOTD. Uh, and? Banner MOTD. Banner, like this? B Banner, B A W N E R, Banner. D A double N E R M O T D space M O T D. Okay, banner. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you. Banner M O T D. So uh, we'll use our delimiting character as maybe star. We we'll say authorized. Author. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you for the reminder. Authorized users only okay then i close this all right motd banner this so we have done motd for for the router i think this is where's the router config this is router appropriate meanings of the day okay then addressing we have done okay description of the interface is save your all right, so let me go to the interfaces. I forgot to do the description. Interface, let's go back here. Interface G0 slash zero. Description is um, link to switch one. All right, interface G0 slash one. Then description link to switch to all right so um, i think those are the two interfaces we have all right so let's see all right uh -huh. description and then save your configuration okay so we have done on the router so we should go for configurations on the switches okay i want to believe we have done all on the router so let's come to the switches Configure the default management interface so that it will accept connections um, over the network from local and remote hosts. Use the values in the addressing table. Okay, where's the addressing table? Okay, this is switch. Okay, we have configured the VLANs. Okay, what else are we to do? Let me see. What else are we to do? Okay, default management, VLAN once, we have done that. And then, um, remote users use the values in there, okay. Configure an encrypted password using the value in step 1A above. All right, configure all lines except connections using password. All right, so let's see 1A above. Where is 1A? I think this is it. I think this is what they want us to do. So we should use do the same for for switches. So let me go back to switch one. Switch one. Um, exit. So whose name would be switch one? Okay, and then enable secrets would be what? See. Oh, I forgot to use service password encryption uh, to encrypt all the others. I think we will do that also, but let's finish this. Can you go secret? Uh, C1, oh, sorry, C I S C O E N P A 5 5. Okay, then line VTY. 0 to 15, since it's a switch. Um, uh, password would be C, 
S-C-O-L-R-Y-T-A-5-5. Login. Line console zero. Password. Cisco line pass. Okay. Login. Then service password encryption. Okay, so what else do we need? So I think we have done this. This is one A, accept connections, message of the day banner. All right, so let's see banner MOTD. Um, this authorized users only. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think those are these are what we need to do for the switch. So let's go to the next switch. Okay, let's save our configuration. Right. Okay. The next switch. Um exit. Uh, let's see host name will be switch two. Okay. Then enable secrets the C O S C O E N P A five five. Then line console zero password would be C S C O Line pass. Okay, I think some right. Login. Line BTY zero to fifteen. Password is to line pass. Login. Okay. Think exit then service password encryption then banner MOTD uh, authorized users only uh, um, okay so okay. Now we have done all this. Let's now see what's the next thing. Um, configure, okay. Configure the switches so that they can send data to host on remote network. Configure the switches so that they can send to data, so you can send data to host uh, on remote network. I think we have, we have done that. We have configured. Um, we have configured that. Anyway, let me set up the IP default gateway. This is switch two. So we are to free to play around. This is switch two. Switch two. So IP default gateway. And will be ten dot. Um, and at uh, 20.3. All right, so the right, so let me come I switch to this one. IP default, default gateway would be 10.10.10.3. Right, so uh, is there anything we are missing? I think we are on 95%. I think there are some other things we left out. Okay, configure the switch so that they can send data. Uh, I'm not sure of this, but we'll check the results and see where, where we made mistakes and see what we can do to correct.
So configure the addressing on your host. If your configurations are complete, you should be able to pin all the devices in the topology. Okay. So for instance, let me, um, I'm on PC1, on PC1, so ping 10.10.10.1, okay, I'm getting reply, so let me ping PC2, let's see, 10.10, let me take the switch, 10.10.10.2, uh, is it 10.10.10.2, yeah. Okay, yeah, that's the switch, that's the switch, the VLAN 1 interface. How about the IP default gateway we put, dot 3, let's see. Let's watch and see. Yeah. Let's see, okay, the IP default gateway is not, okay, that one is to access the switch. All right, well, we can already reach that. Then let's see, they say we should ping all, so let me see, 20 network. 20.1, okay, I can reach 20.1, how about 20.2, okay, I am unable to reach 20.2, so we have a problem somewhere, so let's check our results and see where we made mistakes so that we can correct it, okay, Assessments, okay, default gateway for switch one, all right, it's incorrect, default gateway for switch two, is incorrect, so I think those are just the issues that we have, default gateway for switch one and for switch two. So let's now see where we made a mistake, so switch one, uh default gateway switch one what's the ip details so let me see uh show ip interface brief let's see vlan one should appear here where is it okay okay so this is 10.10.10.2 so if i do show run I should see my IP default gateway. All right, I put 10.3. All right, so let me try and see if we put 10.10.10.2. Maybe you might be right, but I'm not sure. I've not tried that, so let's give it a try. So let me go to configuration terminal. No IP default gateway. So now IP before gateway 10.10.10.2. Okay. Um, right. So let me check what's the next one. Let me check the results and see whether we are right on that for switch. Uh, the default gateway is still the same thing. Wow, so I really don't know what we need to do here. Uh, again, uh, maybe you guys should give it a try. So where we have anyone who can help us out, let's know. Because as it is now, I think this is just the two activities left for us, for switch one and two, the IP default gateway. We have assigned the IP default gateway, unfortunately, uh, the system is not recording it as part of progress, so I don't know. I don't know why. All right, so um, uh, I think um, we we are done. We are good for today. Let me check my chat. Uh, someone is asking if it's possible how to create an activity. Okay, that's just what we just did. We have created an activity. And someone says we can't see. Uh, I think that was much earlier. Sure, you can see now. So um, I think this is a nice place to stop. We have achieved quite a lot today. Uh, 
thank you very, very much for, for making our time to attend today's class. And um, for all those that join, I'm happy. And uh, I'm sure you have participated very well. So I'm going to be sending you the recording. Uh, thank you very much.